we are going to try here. We're going to look at, at uh, two examples. We'll look at one example today, and we'll look at the, the next, uh, another example next week of a, uh, uh, a Christian believer. And uh, we're still in, in uh, Philippians um, as, as we go through this. Philippians chapter 2 is, is where we're at. And this morning we're going to look at, at uh, Timothy as an example. Uh, Paul is, is talking about Timothy. He's getting ready to send Timothy back to the, the church in Philippi. And uh, there's some, some fantastic things that, that sometimes we don't, we don't uh, think about um, when it comes to Timothy. Um, he's kind of in the background. He's kind of a, um, he's a, a supporting player, I guess you'd say, um, as, as we look at this. But there's something about supporting players. If you don't have the supporting players, guess what? You don't have the main player. I mean, that's, that's the way it, 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 it works. Um, uh, you can have the main player, but it, take, it takes that other person there, that second person, uh, to really to help things along. And so that's kind of what we're going to look at this morning as, as we get into that. Um, so here, here we go. Um, Philippians chapter 2, starting with verse 19. And he says, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon. He continues on, that I also may be cheered when I receive news about you. So Paul's talking, he's, he's he, again, remember, he's in prison. Um, he's only hearing about things, but he's going to send Timothy to them um, so that, that when he gets reports back, he can be excited and, and happy about them. We do the same thing even today, and we've talked about that before, that uh, um, things will happen on the district. When we have our district meeting, we talk about things that happen in different churches, and we all celebrate that. They usually show a video of baptisms that have happened at the different churches, and we celebrate that. We celebrate... The, 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 the increases in attendance. We cry with those that close. You know? um, so we, we, do that, we do that here. Um, we want to celebrate with one another. We want to celebrate with one another. So Timothy, a young man who willingly served in second place. Second place. We, um, we tend to think of second place as not being the winner. I don't know why we do that. I think I, I, I told you that um, um, when I was in Germany, we uh, competed in, in a reconnaissance air meet. Uh, the plane I worked on uh, had a bunch of cameras in, in the, the nose of it, and they would fly around taking pictures in different places. A, a regular military outfit, a, a full-time military outfit, normally does not win these things because we are working constantly uh, we can't take time to have our plane sit down we polish them and do all that kind of stuff um, so so the the year before i went or two years before i went um, we actually won first place wow the year i went we didn't win first place we won second place and you would have thought we won first place and we were asked to be quiet you can imagine how that went over with me um the thing of it is, we, we tend to think second place is not being the winner, but second place is an awesome place to be. It truly is. You know, it, it gives you something to strive for. You're not at the bottom of the pile, but you're still striving. You're still working at things. And when it comes to, to uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Timothy in this case, and we'll talk about, probably repeat this, um, he has a, an awesome responsibility. He is the leader for those under him, and he also supports the person over him. That's what the second person does. So, so when we think about second place, that, think of that as being the ultimate place. He's not at the top. Okay, yeah, that, that's something that we're told we need to strive for. I tell you what, I would rather be a second banana. They normally don't get in all the trouble. Yeah. I, I spend enough time there as it is. Yeah. But, but to think about it, you have, he has people that are looking up to him and he's discipling them and he's still being discipled by Paul. And not only that, Paul is getting ready to send him to a church so that he can encourage the church and come back and tell Paul the great things that they're doing. So he has got that responsibility of going out. We talked about a couple weeks ago that, that I, when I came back from, from conference that, that Wes said he was going to come out this year and, and be with us. Well, he can't do that. That's number one guy, right, on our district. That's our district superintendent. He is sending his number two guy. Tell you what, I kind of like the number two guy. 
I mean, I like number one. He's okay. I don't get to talk to him that often. But I've, Joni and I have spent a lot of time with Wayne and Judy. And I think you'll, you'll, get a, you'll, you'll see that when they, when they come, um, that they are just super, super people. But they're number two. And they go out in support of what number one does. And so that's what the Timothy position is. Timothy is, is number two, and he's willing to go and serve. You have a lot of people that are in number twos that aren't really willing. They don't stay in number two very long. Eh? They usually kind of fall by the wayside. So let's look at, look at Timothy here. He's, he's serving in a, in a second place and, and has a privilege, like I just said. He has, has those that, that uh, uh, look up to him for guidance, and he also provides uh, to, uh, Paul with, with the things that he needs and, and goes out and, 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 and drums up support for him and, and goes and, and finds out what's happening in the churches and comes back. So, like I say, that's what Wayne's going to do. Um, Terry, Terry had mentioned when I first talked about Wayne, she goes, I've heard that name, I've heard that name. She goes, oh, he's on the website all the time that he's been at this church, and this is what happened in that church. Yeah. That's what he does. That's what he does. And he reports that back to Wes. This is what's happening in this church. And this is the great things that are happening. And he's there to support and he's there to encourage the pastor. Wow. Timothy will be doing the same thing by going to Philippi to, to encourage them. He's a young man who willingly served in second place. And he also, <laughs> here's the next verse. I hope in the Lord Jesus, well, this is the verse we just said and we'll get on to it. I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon. So that I also may be cheered when I receive news about you. Then he goes on. I have no one else like him who will show genuine concern for your welfare. No one else like him that will show genuine concern for your welfare. I want you to think about this. This is 2,000 years ago just about. And Paul is saying, I don't have anybody else that I can send. No preacher. No Christian hmm, that would look out for your welfare like Timothy will. 2,000 years ago. I'm here to say things haven't changed too much in the last 2,000 years. Hmm. Isn't that a shame? Isn't that a shame? The, the, a lot of pastors are, are filling places to fill places. Let's just put it that way. There, there are some that, uh, I, I uh, talked to a pastor friend of mine at, at, at one of the other places that where we lived, um, and he was in, at, uh, pastoring in one of the bigger churches in the town, and he was looking for an assistant, or for a youth minister. And he had two or three people come in, he said, the first thing out of the mouth was, how much does this pay? He went through about three people on the fourth one, the person went through the interview, and he finally got up to leave and walked out the door, and he came back, knocked on the door, and he goes, oh, by the way, does this pay anything? He says, guess who got hired? It's not about the pay. It's about the service. It's serving. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. <laughs> don't cut my pay today, please. Huh? We still have to have that. But the thing about it, that is not... With <laughs> I would love to be in a position where I didn't need an income just to be able to proclaim the gospel. That's all I want to do. That's all I want to do. And so, so to, to, to do that kind of thing, I have no one else like him who will show genuine concern for your welfare. That's what a, a pastor is supposed to do, is show concern for you. And Paul is saying, I, I, I don't have anybody else that's in my entourage here that I feel comfortable sending that will, one, encourage you, one, uh, two, that, that will look out for you, that, that will, will lift you up and do the things he's supposed to do like Timothy can. Wow. I would love for Paul to say that about me. Think about it. Think about it. Out of all the people that he could send, this is the person. And he commends him. Commends him. Wow. Timothy had a, a kindred, brotherly spirit in caring for others. He had a shepherd's heart, in other words. A shepherd's heart. Yeah, you, you think about it, about a shepherd, and I don't think about a shepherd in today's society. I think about a shepherd at that time. That that their responsibility was to go out one to look after the sheep, keep keep, town, keep them all together, but supposed to protect them. Because a lot of times they didn't. They were responsible to the the, the, the farmer or the, the the rancher or whatever you want to call him. And that's who they were there, there for. So Timothy had that shepherd's heart. He wanted to look out for the sheep, and yet was responsible to Paul. 
a couple of verses. Jeremiah 3.15. Jeremiah says, Then I will give you a shepherds, a, a shepherds after my own heart, says the Lord. He says, Who will lead you with knowledge and understanding. That's the kind of heart we're supposed to have. Hmm? But there's Jeremiah 23.4. I will place shepherds over them who will tend to them. And he says, And they will no longer be afraid or terrified. <laughs> wow. Nor will any be missing, declares the Lord. A shepherd's heart. One that is caring, one that is concerned. One that, 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 that cries when that one that is lost and goes out looking for them. Hmm? That's the kind of spirit that Timothy has. About this, this next verse. About this, 1 Peter 5, 2. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them. Hmm? Not because you must, but because you are willing as God wants you to be. Wow. Not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve. Eager to serve. And yet there are so many today that are looking for that gain and not for the service. Wow. Looking for that prestige. Huh? So T Timothy had a kindred brotherly spirit in caring for others. He also uh, was willing to deny himself to be obsessed with things of Christ. I, I like that, to be obsessed with things of Christ. I, I, I don't know if I've ever been too obsessed about a lot of things. I'm, I'm obsessed about my kids and my grandkids. I'm obsessed I don't want to see any more cougars in my barn anytime soon. I'm pretty obsessed about that. But to, to, to be so, that that's your only thought process. To, to, that, oh, everything you want to do is geared towards that. And that's where Timothy's at. He is obsessed with serving the things of Christ. Obsessed with the things of Christ. Here's the verse. Verses 19 to 20. It says, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon. Like I say, we're backing up here. That I also may be cheered when I receive, cheered when I receive news about you. I have no one else like him who will show genuine concern for your welfare. And he goes on. For everyone looks out for their own interests and not those of Jesus Christ. Wow. We're kind of right there, aren't we, in our world today? We're told that we're number one, even though number one doesn't mean anything anymore. You know, sports, they don't even have number ones anymore. They're all, everybody's winners. Huh? Hmm. That's why so many people are not going to go to heaven. Because we're told everybody's a winner. You don't have to do anything else. No. Lehman Strauss. Um, I, I looked at a, a bunch of uh, commentators in, in dealing with, with this passage. I just want to show you a little bit of, of what he wrote here. He says, uh, A self-seeking, self-glorifying gain momentum with the passing time. As the time goes on, this is what, what seems to happen. He says, Few are seeking to follow closely in the steps of Christ and of Christ-like men, such as Paul. Few are seeking to follow. Few are seeking to follow. He says, most of us seek our own interests while we profess Christ's name. Hmm. One wonders if the claims of Christ ever enter the calculations of some Christians. The late William Lincoln of Berkshire, London, says this, and pay attention here, rest assured that if you put Christ in second place and your own things in first, you will hear of it at the judgment seat. You, you get that? Who's supposed to be number one? <laughs> God's number one. Uh, we are all to be number two. Um, there, there, was, there was somebody who, who tried to become number one, and he was cast out of heaven. Hmm. Maybe that should tell us something. It should tell us something. And yet, we still in our world want to be number one don't we mm. wow you'll face the judgment seat many have made things of, of Christ second in order to protect their their uh, livelihood their comfort their acceptance security recognition position and the list goes on and on and on doesn't it um, that they, they, they want to be number one they want these things to be number one that put Christ number two hey I, I, I'm a I'm a Christian and I go to church all the time uh, well except for Super Bowl Sunday and um, uh, during elk season and the start of salmon season. And, um, oh, yeah, there's that other time that, that, that we don't go. And then there's um, 
Boy, but I'm a Christian. I go every time the doors are open, if it's convenient. Isn't it going to be a shame we stand before the Heavenly Father and he says, oh, well done, my good and faithful servant. Uh, unfortunately, the doors aren't open today. It's just not convenient. Wow. Wow. Matthew 25, 43, Jesus said, I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. I mean, we know the rest of this passage. It's making a point here that we should be number two. Everyone else should be number one. We should be striving to help everybody else. We should be striving to, to, to lift them up. We should be striving to provide for them also says then he said to them watch out be on your guard against all kinds of greed <laughs> life does not consist in an abundance of possessions yes just because you have everything doesn't mean that's life we who are strong ought to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves first corinthians no one should seek their own good but the good of others <laughs> jeremiah six thirteen, from the least to the greatest all are greedy for gain Prophets and priests alike all practice deceit. Yow. It's a pretty broad general statement, isn't it? And I would have to agree with him. Now we're talking thousands of years after the fact. Wow. Ezekiel. My people come to you as they usually do and sit before you to hear your words, but they do not put them into practice. Wow. Their mouths speak of love, but their hearts are greedy for unjust gain. <laughs> not much has changed, has it? Not much has changed at all. Verses 19 to 21. I hope in Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon. So... <laughs> that I also may be cheered when I receive news about you. I have no one else like him who will show genuine concern for your welfare, for everyone looks out for their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know that Timothy has proved himself because a son with his father, because as a son with his father, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. I hope, therefore, to send him to you at, as as I see how things go with me. Wow. And I'm confident in the Lord that I myself will come soon. Pay, pay attention there. Timothy was willing to be a son and a disciple. Paul talks to him like, a, like he's a son. There's um, You don't know our other two boys. Uh, I mean, you know the names. You know probably the kids. <laughs> like I told you, I... There was one day I was having coffee and couldn't remember one of my grandkids, and luckily Cindy told me who it was. Pretty bad, isn't it? But you do know Josh. And Josh and I, I, I mean, I have a relationship with, with, with all three boys. Josh and I have a special relationship just because I retired about the time that he was getting ready to start going to school, and the other kids were already going. And him and I, I'd do my Greek, and we'd sit down, and we'd watch TV together. And then, of course, we moved to Miles City, and, and uh, we were doing the work on the parsonage there, and, and Josh was my helper. And that went over real well a lot of times. But, but you, there's... There's, and, and I, I get a kick. Like I say, we're going through Revelation. We're doing, we're doing uh, there there on on Thursday evenings, and um, and we also play the the music that uh, Mike and Josh were doing at the time. And I get a kick because I can always tell when Josh is looking at me to find out if I should speed up or slow down. <laughs> and Josh always knows I want him to speed up. You know? But you can see him, and you can see the expression on his face, and you can see, you can see his arm go, oh no, you know. <laughs> That's the kind of relationship that Paul and Timothy have. Paul probably thinking one thing and probably looks at him. Timothy says, oh, I know what you want here. Yep, okay, let's speed up the music. Huh? They understand one another. They're there for one another. They support one another. It's, it's different. I mean, I, I can talk, talk pretty much the same way to Mike, but, but there, it's, it's different because Mike can say, well, forget you, I'm leaving. Josh could do that, but I'd hunt him down. 
you know? You know, there's, there's that difference. And so Paul is saying, I, 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 I have Timothy. He's just like my son. He's done all these things with me. I, I, I want to show you, um, um, like I say, a father-son relationship. Uh, Paul enlisted Timothy as, as one of his disciples and missionary partners on his second missionary journey. As this, uh, how, how this all comes across. I want you to see this. William Barclay gives a, a great summary of verses that connect Timothy to Paul. And so here's, here's what he says. He says, Timothy was a close companion of Paul. Paul called Timothy his son in the faith. And there's the, there, there's the verses. Timothy was a close companion of Paul. Timothy was with Paul in Philippi, Thessalonica, Bera, Corinth, um, in, in Ephesus, and, and there in Rome while Paul was in prison. So here is, here is Timothy. He's, he's with Paul in all these different situations, in all these different places that he's gone to. And so he understands Paul. He's, he's got it. Um, it, it it's, it's, it's just like Joni knows half the things I'm going to say before I even say them, which is really good because I stutter a lot. And, I, and I'll look at her, especially when I can't get the, the words. It just won't come out. She'll tell them. She'll, she'll say what they are. She knows my thought process. It's pretty easy. It's not very... You know, it's not real, real deep here, you know. Uh, but so, so, so she, she's there. She finishes my thought process. I don't want she's like the father, son, or a daughter, or a daughter, or father. Uh, that, that really gets weird. Um, but she knows me, just like Josh knows me, just like James and Jason know me. Uh, they, they understand where I'm at. You know, James called yesterday just to talk. Hey, he's got two and a half weeks before he retires, you know. Dad, I'm in a panic. Hey, I've been there. I understand. Now, he's got a job, and now he's got another job offer that's come across. And so, you know, he's sitting pretty good. But he just wanted to talk to Dad. Huh? Usually the boys call and talk to Mom. Huh? But he just wanted to talk to Dad. Dad, you've been through this. What am I, what am I getting myself into? You know? That's awesome. Paul and Timothy have that connection. Paul and Timothy have been together for a while here. He goes on. He goes, Timothy was involved in one way or another with seven of the writings of Paul. Did you get that? The first and second Thessalonians, second Corinthians, uh, Romans, he sends greetings. uh, Timothy sends greetings uh, to the church. Uh, uh, Colossians. Uh, of course, Philippians. He's he's getting ready to send him off to the Philippi church. Uh, First and second Timothy. Well, duh. He's writing them, so yeah, he's probably involved. Timothy was closely connected to Paul's in, in ministering to the churches. Timothy was sent by Paul to minister, and look at this, in Thessalonica, in Corinth, in Philippi. Huh? See, he's, he, sends, he sends Timothy because he knows he can trust him. And when he sends Timothy out, he knows he's, he's like sending out his son. He understands that. Yeah, you, we, we, let's... let's bring that down to, to our, 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 our district here. Isaac Smith has three sons that are in ministry. Isaac Smith was du- district superintendent here for a long time. I mean, he, he started because he was district superintendent right after we came on the district. As a matter of fact, from the time I was, I was hired at Miles City to the time I got there, Isaac had taken over. Who's our district superintendent now? Isaac's son. Now, you, th- you think there's not a lot of same thought process there? Now, now, granted, there's a big difference because Isaac <laughs> will be the first one to tell you, he is not technical. Huh? Yeah, he's definitely not high tech. I mean, he, he just recently learned how to use a flip phone, you know. So <laughs> Wes is high tech. You know, Wes has it. I mean, we, we, uh, uh, we vote with machines and do all the rest of this stuff now. So things have changed. But their thought process is still the same. That we're trying to minister and reach people for Christ. That we want to open up as many new churches as we possibly can. And this district has just exploded with, these, with the two, two Isaacs as district superintendents. Now, what, what has happened since Wes has taken over? We picked up Minnesota. Yeah. So our district... <laughs> it's a pretty big district. Huh? So you're talking from the Mississippi West, you know, when you really get down to it, and from Utah to Alaska. Huh? That's a big district. That's a huge district, landmass-wise. When you look at Michigan's three districts in itself. Huh? 
But that's what their thought, their thought, whole thought process is the same. It's the same. And I've talked to, to uh, 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 um, a Samuel Smith, which is Isaac's brother. Guess what? I mean, he's a, he's a pastor in Joliet, Montana, another small town. But his thought process is just like Isaac's. It's just like Wes's of growing the kingdom for God. Not about how big can I grow at my church. You get that? My church? Because it's not mine. It's God's church. It's God's church. And so our whole thought process, if we all thought exactly the same, if we all got on board, we talked about that last week, if, our, if we focused on the same exact thing, things would drastically change in our little town here. I said, well, we all think the same way. We all want to see the church grow. And I've told you before, I've, I've, we've, we've been places and, and invited people in, and people say, well, they're not even supposed to be here. What church do you belong to? Everybody in our community should be walking through our doors. They should all be here. And we'll pipe the sound outside, and you all can sit in your cars. We have the technology to do that. Because this is supposed to be a place for those seeking Jesus Christ. Now, that, but you all need to be here to encourage those people and to lift them up and to build them up and to disciple them so that you become like father and son or father and daughter or mother and daughter or whatever that relationship is like Timothy and Paul have. Malachi 2.6 True instruction was on his mouth and nothing false was found on his lips. And that's kind of like the Timothy here. He walked with me in peace and upright in uprightness and turned many from sin. This is so at first corinthians this then is how you ought to regard us hmm? as servants of christ and of those entrusted with the mysteries god has revealed wow as servants of christ remember we've looked at that word servant as a bond slave hmm? a servant of christ and as those entrusted with the mysteries god has entrusted us revealed to us 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. There have been some people... that I've come in contact with over the years and I think what are you doing in ministry yeah. I just I just didn't I had one person who would find me on Monday morning no matter where I was at so he could complain about his church from Sunday I tried to hide I truly did Joni and I would swap cars but Mile City isn't very big. <laughs> and so he was able to find me. And all he wanted to do was cut his congregation down. I think, why are you in ministry? You have nothing good to say about him? Why are you even there? I've had, <laughs> we've been, been in, at, 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 at conferences and, and people are going around talking about their church and stuff and and the, 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 they'll come to me and it's like, you don't have anything bad to say. No. My congregations are great. That's not because of me. That's because of the congregation. Oh, do I want to find something wrong? I bet I could. Mike didn't get his guitar tuned right this morning. My goodness. that, that woo. Let's throw him under the bus. We support one another. We are supposed to support one another. I don't think I ever read where Jesus criticized all the people he was ministering to. As a matter of fact, even when they denied him, Jesus accepted them. Wow. I have a feeling Timothy would be the same exact way. He has that shepherd's heart. Paul felt comfortable with sending him out. 
Paul felt comfortable with letting him go to the churches that, that he had been involved with, building them up. That, that person who, who found me on Monday mornings, I would not send him out to a church that I was involved in. <laughs> I'd be afraid to tear it down before I got back there. But Paul was not concerned about Timothy that way. So next week we're going to look at another example Epaphrodites Epaphroditus Ditus. don't ask me to say that ten times fast I'm glad I got it out one time but this is another example that, that Paul is using um, as, as he talks to the, the church as he writes to the church in Philippi of people that we should uh, not strive to be but strive to have the hearts that they have. He was courageous. And we'll talk about that next week. Why don't you stand this morning? We'll get out of here. Father, I, th I thank you for the, the, the relationship between Paul and Timothy. That Paul took him under his wing and put so much trust into him. I thank you that, that, that Timothy was there and, and, and relayed everything that Paul wanted and encouraged the churches, supported them, lifted them up, that he was there to help Paul along the way. I pray that we become Timothys. Uh, I don't want to be the Paul. I want to be the one that supports Paul. I want him to say, Jim, I need this to be done and be able to go out and do it. He puts that much trust in me. I pray that you would put that trust in us, Father. That you would trust us as a congregation to proclaim the gospel loud and strong. That you would trust us as a congregation to reach our community. That you would trust us as a congregation to have our hearts focused on the one thing and one thing that matters most, that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. And that he's coming back. That he's coming back. So Father, would you help us to share that with those we come in contact with this week. And we give you the praise and the honor and the glory that you so well deserve. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless. Have a great Sunday.